Good afternoon. I will call the meeting of the Airport Special Management Committee to order here. And the first thing we'd like to do, if you don't mind, is please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all so much. Okay, first off, I'd like to ask, and well, I'd like to welcome, man, this esteemed audience. Thank you so much for being here today. And thank you, commissioners, for being here today. Uh, but first, I'd like to ask, is there any public comment on the consent agenda from anyone in the audience? Okay, seeing none, then I'll move to the consent agenda. And are there any items um, that need to be pulled from the consent agenda for discussion? No. I move that we Sorry? approve the consent agenda. I'll second, second that. Okay. There's a move, a motion, and a second. And all in favor, aye. 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 Approved. Okay. We will now move to the administrative agenda, which starts on tab. Ten, please, for members here. Okay, then I'll turn it over to you. Uh, I'll take over. All item right. 10. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, item ten is requesting the board uh, ratify um, our related purchases, uh, emergency purchases to Hurricane Ian. And if I could, I'd ask Mr. McGonigal to introduce the item. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Brian McGonigal. Yeah. Uh, number ten is we're asking the board to uh, ratify five purchases. Emergency purchases over $100,000 requires board approval. There were five of them. Um, I'll just list them real quick. Uh, we had a sweeper truck for $221,000. We had significant damage to our air freight building at RSW for $248,000. And then three buildings uh, at Page took a significant hit. The fire station for $137,000, an air cargo building one hundred and fifty, dollars and uh, remediation of of Pagefield North of 187. So those had to be done right away. Uh, we, off, we, we did that. Um, we had now have to come to the board after the fact and have them approved. There was 2.1 million in total damage. 955 of it is in front of you today. The other was below 100,000. And uh, fortunately, we've already received 1.6 million in insurance. And uh, we're dealing with FEMA to help plug the holes in the difference. That's what we're I move the item. Oh, I need to call for public comment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there any public comment uh, regarding uh, item or tab number 10, please, from anyone? Okay, hearing none, is there a motion for approval? I'll move the item. Second? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, noted. All right, we will move to tab number 11. And if I may, let me do apologize. Uh, the chair uh, needed to be, uh, he has an excused absence out of town today. And unfortunately, Fran was not feeling well. So didn't want you to think we weren't interested in today, but there was three scheduled things going on. Yeah, Stan? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Item 11 requests the board authorize the executive director to execute a task authorization in the amount of $241,626 um, for the installation of seven self-service credit card stations for our airport parking facility. If I could, I'd ask uh, Brian McGonagall. Yeah, to yeah sure. Uh, yeah, thank you, Ben. Uh, number 11, it's, it's with Hub, Hub Parking Technology. They provide all the equipment uh, in the parking lot. There are seven uh, credit card stations that we're completely replacing with new, better, state-of-the-art. 95% uh, of our revenues comes through uh, credit cards. So we're going to um, get some new, nice new ones in there for, for a total of 241000 So we certainly need to keep that operation we do. We smooth do. Yes. and totally functional, right? Any uh, discussion on that? Yes. Is there any public comment regarding <coughs> tab 11? Hearing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the item. I'll second it. Okay, there's a motion and second. Uh, any <coughs> discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We'll move on to item number 12. And I 
think that's probably where we're going to hear some oral presentations and who will be conducting that and introducing uh, yes. it. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, yes, uh, we have some presentations here today. Uh, number 12, uh, this is for RFP 2306, non-exclusive non food, beverage, and retail concessions. You, you know, we've been talking about this for a while. We put the RFP on the street in September last year. In January, we got three We got three proposals. Uh, one of them was deemed non-responsive. We have two responsible firms that met all the minimum qualifications. Uh, staff Evaluation Committee met on February 22nd. We had a really good meeting. We provided staff summaries to, uh, to the ASMC to help um, in, their, uh, in their rankings. Um, so at, if, if you don't have any questions, I'll turn it over to Melissa, who kind of who will be our MC. If you don't have any yeah. questions. No? Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. Melissa Wendell, Senior Procurement Manager, Butte County Port Authority. Uh, as Deputy Executive Director McGonigal stated, we will hear presentations today from two proposers uh, pro who have provided a responsive proposal to uh, the Port Authority uh, with regard to RFP 2306, non-exclusive food, beverage, and retail concessions. Each proposer is going to have 15 minutes to um, present and that will be followed by an unlimited amount of time for airport special management committee questions. Um, and then that will conclude with a one minute summary and a wrap up from each one of the proposers. So I would like to invite the first proposer to offer a presentation, uh, Reed Olson, the president of OES Concession. Good afternoon. My name is Reed Olson, and I'm the president of Olson SE's Concessions, LLC. And I'm very excited to sit before you to present our company's proposal for non-exclusive food and beverage and retail concessions. Today, our speakers will include myself as president, Frederick Estes as vice president, Sergio De Silva as director of operations, Nate Tam Tom Ford, director of learning and development, Kirk Weiss with Chick-fil-A, Emily Bishop with Earl Enterprises, and additional attendees are Yasi Sapp, director of culinary, and Chef Omar with Earl Enterprises. Our experience and qualifications. So we have two companies that have joined together to make up this RFP. One specializes in retail, that's Estes Enterprises, and one, special, one specializing in food and beverage, Olson Hospitality Partners. I am the co-founder and former co-owner of Hoje Branded Foods and founder of Olson Hospitality Partners. Hoje Branded Foods was a concession team working across six major airports across the United States with average revenues, yearly revenues of 125 million. We are a family owned business who started in 1992. I manage multiple key brand relationships with that company, including Chick-fil-A. I have substantial experience in construction and development and alone in the Atlanta airport on Concourse A, I oversaw the development and operations of the food units and Concourse E which were grossing $62 million a year in sales. I'm a restaurateur with successful street side locations, and I have been awarded multiple honors based off of those locations in Charlotte and Greenville. I have strong leadership and work ethic. 
and here's Fred. Good afternoon. My name is Frederick Estes, and I am the owner, operator of Estes Enterprises. Also, I am the vice president of OES Concessions. Currently, we operate six locations in the MSP International Airport, 10 locations in the Tampa International Airport through a partnership. And my career as a retail operator started at a very, very early age when my parents actually started their first street side location, a Hallmark greeting card store in 1973. So 2023 is a special year for it, an exciting year as we're celebrating our 50th anniversary in business. And this opportunity here at RSW is also an exciting opportunity for us because Reed and I feel as though as we are two second generation owner operators coming together to create one company with strong brands. And we feel that that partnership, that collaboration can give you a unique alternative to the current prime operations you have to create some competition in the airport. We thank you for the opportunity to present today. Sergio. Hi, my name is Sergio De Silva. I'm the director of operations for OES. Uh, previously, I would have 23 years in the airport experience as the director, which I ran uh, four different airports for the Olson for HBF. I ran Pittsburgh, Baltimore, MCO, and Tampa. Uh, and I've done 140 million in revenue that I was managing myself. And I started this in this airport because of my mentor, Steve Olson. Sergio, I'm not gonna let you steal uh, my dad's thunder here, so I'm gonna say something. Um, you know, Steve is a board member of the company. He's not president, but he is uh, my mentor, and he had me. Um, the reason I'm in the aviation, airport, food and beverage industry is because of him. He created a absolute phenomenal company with $225 million in annual revenue, over 124 restaurants, 40 brands of 15 different airports, and again, he's on the board of um, Olson SE Southwest Concessions. Hi, my name is Nate Tomford, and I'm in charge of our uh, learning and development. We all know staffing can be an issue these days, so um, my primary uh, goal is to <clears throat> make sure we have a happy and healthy culture here in the airport, that we have managers that are trained for site-specific locations, um, that we offer extensive training programs, and we anticipate the staffing as that's important as the, the flow of the airport. So um, we uh, appreciate your time. So we're going to present to you all our concept plan for uh, the food and beverage and retail packages that we've laid forth in the RFP. First off, we're going to talk about um, our Marche food court. So this is what we feel is an incredible addition to the airport with additional brands, additional seating, and uh, we have some a grand piano that is hard to see but is blended in the bottom left corner. Um, that projects sound to all the passengers and customers that are sitting at the bar in a beautiful area. We have four great quick service brands that can, people could sit, they could order from an iPad ordering technology device or a QR code scanner, and we could bring the food out to them or they could order up at the counter. And we're gonna present these four brands and talk about the advantages of each one of them we have 370 seats in this food court with charging outlets and power outlets at, at each location. We also have a breezeway on the backside of these food and beverage stalls that allows for additional seating and natural lighting. So we feel like this is an amazing addition that as you can see with the food in front of you has a lot of potential for variety for families and children. One of our proposed uh, locations uses the fresh, highest quality of ingredients. Playa Bowl serves delicious acai, coconut bowls, smoothies, juices that you are having right now, uh, and with sustainability and healthy options. 
They are, they are in 14 locations in the state of Florida, including one in Fort Myers, and 170 total locations in 21 states, the majority across the East Coast. And at this time, I'd like to call Kurt. Thank you. Uh, really great to be here. Uh, I work for a company called Chick-fil-A. Um, so super happy that Reed called me to have the opportunity to work together. While he worked uh, as a co-owner with HBF and has a lot of history and food and beverage experience, we wouldn't let him rest on those laurels. Uh, so when he approached me, we had to fully vet him to be an approved licensee. And it's a very thorough vetting process, including mystery uh, site visits. He has to visit our support center and be vetted by our entire non-traditional operations team. But what makes us perfect for you know, this opportunity in Southwest uh, Florida International Airport, we are a leader in food travel service. We are fast, high quality food made fresh daily, amazing, remarkable customer experiences. I challenge you to have a bad experience at a Chick-fil-A, and if you do, please let us know, we will make it right. And we have strong sales performances. So if we go to the bottom right, our average Chick-fil-A in an airport does $4 million. But that includes some very small airports. That brings down the average. We also have locations like the one in Concourse A in Atlanta doing $10.6 million out of only 850 square feet. That's a testament to the brand power and our ability to get customers through with high quality food on the go like an airport traveler. But let's talk about Florida. We have 223 locations across the state of Florida. We are well recognized and beloved. And in Florida airports, we have two, two in Tampa International, two in Orlando, one in Pensacola, one coming soon to my hometown where I live in Miami, and hopefully here so we can be partners together. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Emily Bishop, and I'm with Earl Enterprise out of Orlando, Florida. Um, I'm really excited to present three of our iconic brands um, that would be featured in the Sunset Cafe. So the first one is Vuka Express. Um, 2023 is a big year for us as we are celebrating our, four, our 30th anniversary this summer. So it's a nationally recognized brand, iconic bit brand, legacy brand. Um, people have, love our food, our quality ingredients. The focal point of the Vuka Express is our brick oven pizza that will be in the center of the um, concept. Uh, we are located in 68 locations throughout the US. We have four in the state of Florida that do extremely well. And then we also are in the Philippines. Another concept that's very exciting to present today is Asian Street Eats. Our first one started in downtown Disney in Anaheim, California. Um, most recently in 2020, we were able to open an LAX airport at the Tom Bradley International Terminal. Um, it really caters to the high demand of Asian uh, cuisine that our guests and consumers are looking for. Uh, all of our bowls are customizable. We have um, customizable bowls with different proteins. We have a, a scallion pancake wrap that can be modified to any dietary needs. And then we also have an assortment of pop stickers at this concept. It's quick, easy to execute, and has had really great reviews. So that rounds out the Sunset Cafe. You see the four concepts there um, built right off of the piano bar and a, a really enjoyable experience. This next slide is one of my favorites. This is our third brand at Earl Enterprise, um, Brio Italian Grill. As you can see here, we really look for that Tuscan feel, open air experience. Um, we're known for our beautiful terraces, and you can see in these photos that is a true replication of what we look for. Um, our guests love to linger on the terrace, sometimes too long, um, enjoying in all of our different food. So all of our menu is chef-driven. We have bold, um, fresh ingredients um, of the highest quality, really featuring Tuscany out of Italy. Um, we are located in 33 locations across the US, um, but seven of them are here in Florida. They are some of our milestone flagship locations. We have one just down the way in uh, Waterside Shops in Naples that does extremely well, um, and we're really proud of this concept. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. I'm going to wrap up our presentation with the iStore Express, some of our retail concepts. iStore Express is one of the most recognized electronic company in the aviation industry. They have 25 retail stores and airports. 
They have a 30-year relationship with Apple products, which they brought to the airports. Expertly trained store associates, and it's a consumer friendly that appeals to female and male customers. This is a rendering of our iStore Express store. Next, we will have Fort Myers Sunglass Boutique. We're extremely excited about being able to share with you and to promote the assortment of designer, contemporary, and sports sunglasses. Travelers will have a nice selection of polarized sunglass options prior to their beach and water excursions. Sunglasses and tech are essential accessories for the modern day traveler. Combining two travel essential stores into one location provides us the opportunity to maximize sales by providing travelers with iconic brands. And this is a rendering of our sunglass boutique. Last but not least, our travel essential store, Sunset Market. This name is inviting and invokes postcard images of Florida's beautiful sandy beaches. We'll offer a nice mix of local, regional, and national brands, products to create a sense of Florida and the Fort Myers region. A one-stop shop with strategically arranged products to meet the needs of all RSW travelers. Technology will also include self-checkout and traditional checkout stations to maximize convenience and customer service. Thank you. And this is the beautiful rendering that our architect, Adam Pugh, did of the Sunset, um, Cafe, Sunset Market. To wrap up the presentation, we're going to talk about the business and financial plan. This exciting package has the ability to produce over 19 million in total concession sales per year. That's creating over 225 jobs with a yearly rent to the airport of 2.75 million. The minimum annual guarantee rent proposed is 2 million, 2.22 million. Our total capital investment is nearly $8 million for this project. Our food court alone is projected to produce over 10.4 million. The Brio alone over 3.5 million. And we have the ability to grow the food and beverage program in the Southwest International Airport by almost 30%. The retail package will make up 5.3 million and grow the retail to almost 20%. Frederick and I have split up our ownerships based off of our expertise. We're showing that the food and beverage will take up nearly 72% of our business and retail 28%. We have split up the ownership based off food and beverage where Frederick is going to own 30% as ACDBE partner and the prime concession 70%. Because of these strong financial projections, we have the ability to use these earnings to retain top tier talent. Thank you for your consideration and we look forward to answering your questions. <laughs> so does he do a wrap up first or we ask our questions first? We do questions. Questions, okay. Well, first of all, let me make a comment. Randy's really gonna hate him at this meeting. <laughs> oh, he's not kidding, right? He'll get over it. Okay, yes, questions. Uh, what are you basing these projections uh, and your financial from? Are you looking at the total number of passengers through the airport to, uh, and uh, what historically has been your capture of the, because we have two other vendors here at the airport, and uh, how do you see uh, you meeting these goals here in terms of uh, capturing people that aren't being captured now by the other uh, vendors? Yeah, so we took the historical data from last year and we added up all the food and beverage and all the retail, but based off of your total employments, and we used your projections from 2025, and we figured that the average employment number is going to increase by over $3 based off where it is now due to new updated brands, fun options, good healthy experiences, and the update that you are doing to the terminal. And all these numbers are really based off of our past experience in airports and, the, and our brand's projections based off their street locations and airport locations. And we did the same thing for the retail as well. How do you, uh, how do you work with the other vendors to uh, prevent a lot of uh, 
overlap of different food services. Are, are you talking about the vendors? Are, that, you, lo that are you locked into the, the vendors that you presented here today? Uh, or are there other options available to you if, if, for instance, one of these doesn't pan out in terms of what your projections are and, and, and the amount of food that they're serving? Are you able to replace that brand with something else? Absolutely. And that's why we brought Oral Enterprises to the table that has over 25 brands in their portfolio. I've done a ton of transitions in airports in my career, and I find we do real-time financials, and I want to be transparent with our brands and with our partners in order to figure out the best way to increase same-source sales and find the right fit for the passengers. I just had one question about the uh, what you call, I believe, the sunset market. What are the, what's the product line in that market? I didn't see anything about the products. Yes, the sunset market. It's a travel essential store, so it will have some of your beverages, grab and go foods, snacks, magazines, books, books, uh, magazines. So it's, it's a one stop shop if you. Would see okay. That. Yeah. All right. That's all I have right now. Chick-fil-A is one of my wife's favorites. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I'm going to go oh, there. I do have another question. <laughs> I don't know who walked past one and not stop. <laughs> I did have another question. Okay. Uh, I mean, Chick-fil-A is noted for being closed on Sunday for mm -hmm. their reason. Yeah. yeah. Is that going to also be true at the airport? Absolutely. Uh, we do not waver from that. And many years ago, that used to be a problem with some airports. Over time, they realized not only do we do more sales, in six days than other concepts do in seven. But the passengers have come to accept and know that we're simply closed on Sundays and they, they actually value that and appreciate it. What's more about this design is it's part of a lineup of different brands. So when we are closed on Sundays in this situation, there's gonna be plenty of other options and you're not gonna have disappointed passengers. Okay. But you did, pardon me, but you did, uh, I think it was a DFW, uh, when there was a storm or something, you did open temporarily on Sundays. We, we did, but we didn't sell the food. So we actually gave it to the passengers who were stuck at the airport um, as a sign of, you know, giving in relief. Yeah. Thank you. You're up to speed, yeah. I wish I had known that because I was... <laughs> <laughs> Dana, do you have any questions? No, I'm good. Uh, any further questions? Well, excellent presentation, and so if you'd like time to wrap up. Um, just closing remarks, thank you all very much, and we just can't thank my team enough for helping me out with this, and we put a lot of work in. This has been a passion project for myself. Um, we have proven top-tiered brands, as you could see, from our retail and food and beverage. Our company, including myself and Frederick, are entrepreneurs, we're hands-on owners. We strive for excellence in guest service and do not allow us to waver any bit in that aspect. We have beautifully designed in restaurants and retail locations. We focus on speed of service. We actually have cameras with people monitoring speed of service, checking them three times a day to make sure that the lines are not getting backed up. We use the most current technology, and we have the expertise, human resources, and capital to profitably, profitably operate these locations to the highest standards. We appreciate your consideration for this RFP and are, given, uh, and are confident, given the opportunity, we will surpass your expectations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent. As you leave, I'm, I'm sure you're aware there's a great school of music no, and arts at FTCU. I'm sure a lot of those students would love to get on that baby grand, so well, I remember I that. Win you, though. What is it in here? I don't know. Maybe they could cut it. Uh, could we cut our food and stuff back there? Out of respect for the you, you don't have to. No? Okay. The others won't be offended. 
They know what's going on. Yeah. Okay. All right, at this time, I would like to introduce our next presenter to you, SST America Incorporated. Um, and uh, taking the lead is John Clark, Senior Vice President of Business Development. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, my name is John Clark. I'm Senior Vice President, Business Development for SSP. And I have the pleasure of being able to introduce uh, our team to you. Um, before that, I do that, I would like to really express our appreciation on behalf of SSP America and the team that we've put together for this opportunity. Um, we are food travel experts, and we are passionate about what we do. And, in introducing this team, what I want you to go walk away with or come across, what I want to come across with is we are food travel experts. We're restaurateurs first and foremost, but we've provided a balance in how we approach airport business. Incorporated in our team also are airport people who have had careers in airports. So we understand both the need from the airport's perspective as well as how to operate restaurants and retail in airports. So. Um, Leading the conversation today will be Oscar Hernandez, who is our Vice President of Concepts and Development, followed by uh, Don Hunter, Vice President, Business Development. And we also have Chris Demitz, who is our Vice President in, of Finance. He does all the financial work for us. And our retail partner, uh, Raymond Kale Jr., who's the President and CEO of Newslink Group. And Anna Saturio, who is a partner um, but also does some work with SSP as well. So with that, I will turn it over to Oscar. Thank you, John. So we'll go through the experience of SSP. Uh, through our passion principles, we'll allow you to understand our culture. Uh, we'll present our partners and the brands that we're bringing to RSW and our community involvement in Florida, as well as at the end, we'll, we have our uh, uh, Chris Demets and finance will be able to answer any financial, financial questions. So who are we? Uh, SSP by the numbers, uh, 600 travel venues uh, globally, 1.5 customers that we serve on a daily basis, uh, 4 billion annual sales. Our heritage dates back to 60 years and we have over 2,800 units worldwide, 550 brands and we serve in 35 countries, and like uh, John said, definitely we have passion for cool restaurants that deliver a sense of place. And what we're the most proud is the nearly 39,000 employees that we have worldwide. In North America, we serve 38 airports. In Florida, uh, we have St. Pete's, Sanford, Tampa, Orlando, and soon number 39 in Miami, my hometown. So some of the accolades. 2018, uh, Airport Council International, uh, here from Florida, we won first place for best national brand concept with Hard Rock Cafe in Tampa. Second place, best new food and beverage, quick service concept, Cafe Con Leche in the Tampa, Florida airport. We are recognized as a leader in the industry. AXN, or Airport Experience, uh, named us best overall restaurant tour in 2019, 2020, and about a month and a half ago, we won for 2023. ACI, best employee recognition in 2021. Now let me give you uh, what a culture it's all about. What you see here, it's our passion principles. And we spell it just like that, passion. Every employee besides the brand training goes through an enculturation of two weeks 
to clearly understand what our mission is. And our CEO every quarter nation, nationwide does a, what we call a, uh, a town hall meeting with our employees to make sure that this is present, that this is something that we breathe and live every day. We have passion, passion for every de detail. We deliver authentic experience. The service is from the heart. Sincerity every step of the way. Innovation, absolutely, more than ever now with technology, but it, it, that service that, that gives us that edge. Open to new ideas in these town halls, our employees are able to give us feedback for us to be more innovative and noble at all times. Our call to, to, for the mission, it's every meeting, every employee can recite this. I'm a fruit travel expert from SSP America. We are passionate about bringing cool, authentic restaurants to airports that reflect a taste of place. And I'll let John now introduce some of our business partners. Not with us today, but uh, Christina uh, Korch is one of our partners. She's based in Miami and is a partner in the other Florida airports with us. Uh, hit the next one. Uh, Judge Belvin Perry, also Florida-based, is a partner in other Florida locations as well, out of Orlando. And Anna Satorio, who's here with us today, representing our um, partner uh, out of Miami. And then uh, Bob Coyne and Ruben Perez, uh, they own Perez of Florida, um, Cuban um, restaurants and coffee. And they are also our Florida partners as well. Um, they couldn't be here today, but uh, they will definitely be a part of this. We're successful. Now let's beat the brands. Uh, we definitely wanted to bring, you know, some great brands and also some Florida heritage. So I'll let now uh, Nature's Table introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Sandra Wagner. I'm an owner of Nature's Table. Um, Nature's Table started in 1977. We are Florida born and raised, and we've been blending smoothies for 46 years. Um, we currently have 42 locations in Florida, 17 here on the west coast of Florida. Our smoothie program includes 16 different flavors. The base that we use to make the smoothies are also manufactured in Florida, and we locally source all the fruits and vegetables as best possible with our local farmers. Our Asahi bowls, which is pictured there, um, are organic, they're non-GMO, they're filled with antioxidants, they're extremely healthy for you. And currently, we are in the Orlando airport, and we serve over 150 of these a day. They've become the little darling of the airport traveler. Um, we are in three airports. Um, we are in Indianapolis, Atlanta Airport, and Orlando. We understand the needs of the hurried airport traveler. All of our products are portable. They're served in echo, um, sustainable, and environmentally friendly containers. Lastly, we support a lot of organizations local to us, especially one is called Allie's Hope, and they prevent um, teenage suicide and, and teenage uh, mental illness, they deal with. Thank you. Here's a rendering of uh, Nature's Table in our food court. Now let's uh, introduce downtown House of Pizza. Jason. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jason Cohn. I'm the owner at Downtown House of Pizza. Uh, we've been in business now for almost 20 years in downtown Fort Myers. We um, locally owned and operated we work seven days a week, over 100 hours a week, we're open to the public. Um, we circulate about 300,000 people through the doors each year and we can get you in and out in less than 30 seconds, that's for sure. Um, we've been number one across the board on Google, Yelp, TripAdvisor for over a decade. Um, we have a passion for doing things the right way and we hope to continue that here at RSW. Thank you. Now, Bon Chuck. Hi, my name is Heather Peoples. I'm with Bon Shop. We are an award-winning Asian street food genre. Um, our airport locations are very successful. We offer both cook-to-order meals and we have the ability to provide pre-made small batch meals without sacrificing the food's quality. 
We use heart healthy grilled and baked proteins, making our meals much healthier than the alternative um, at other Asian concepts. Our menu is varied. We have many options, including bowls, sandwiches, soups, salads, and sides. Our dishes are portable, and they're great for on-the-go traveler. We also have many gluten-free and vegan options. Thank you. Here's a rendering of Playa Food Hall, and there's Bond Shop in downtown House of Pizza. Now let's talk about this saucy meatball. Val, Alex. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sal Basili, and this is my son, Alex. And uh, we've been part of Fort Myers now for over 45 years. Uh, I've had probably the most popular Italian restaurants in Lee County, starting off from way back, Taste of New York, Basili's, uh, Two Meatballs in the Kitchen, Bella Rosa, uh, and now where my son has taken over is called the Saucy Meatball, and he's here in Gateway. Our recipes, they're not just handed down. I watched my mother make these recipes as a little boy, and that's what you're still getting at the Saucy Meatball. There's no question on what the food quality is. One of the things I asked Oscar, I says, if I don't get to have control over the food, I'm not interested in this deal. I want to make sure that the food always stays up to par. Because in Lee County, I don't want to be embarrassed by not putting out the same product that I've done for over 45 years. My son has surpassed me, though. He brought to the table the young stuff. Uh, handheld computers where I'm afraid of, <laughs> you know, uh, all kinds of stuff that just makes, because we have a ticket time of 12, 10 to 12 minutes. So we're going to be a little bit different. We're going to be a full sit down restaurant for the people who don't want to just grab something and go. Uh, we'll have that option available as well. And we will, we will have the option if you want to come up. Um, but you know, we, we gonna, we're going to give the people something they really, really want, especially when they have an extra 10 minutes. Um, you know, and we're locally, pretty much I'm the Emerald of Fort Myers, you know, so who, everybody knows who we are. So your passengers are going to know uh, who we are when they come in and out already. So we have that kind of name that's going to be so recognizable, but it's going to be about the bottom of the line. It's going to be about the quality of the food. And that's what you're going to get with somebody local that we've been doing all our lives. And another thing, being born and raised here and with him being here for so long, you know, we've kind of watched the growth of the area and kind of learned to know what the people actually like and what they really want. So it's not necessarily a fully authentic uh, Italian experience all the time, but it's exactly what the people want all the time. Thank you. <coughs> so here's a rendering of the saucy meatball. You can see there, there's even Alex there on that <laughs> picture. <laughs> and now with uh, Muslink. <clears throat> good, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Raymond Kale. I'm the president and CEO of the Newslink group of companies. Um, it's an honor for me to be here today, and I thank you for the opportunity. I tell you, it's, it's an honor also to be part of a package with SSP, who in our industry is the leading uh, restaurant company, bar none, and I'm super excited to be associated with the local brands here. This is a tremendous uh, package and opportunity for us. Uh, let me just take a couple of minutes and tell you about Newslink. Um, if you look in the top right, there's some statistics here, but um, our mission, which we put in place 20 some odd years ago and still holds true today, uh, two things in there that I want to point to, customer service and the build out of our stores and our environment. Those are two things that are near and dear to our heart. We think we do that better than anybody in our industry on the retail side. We look forward to bringing it to your airport. Um, we're currently in five airports, um, Miami and Tampa here in Florida. We're also in Boston, um, DFW and Nashville. We aren't the biggest concessionaire out there, but we see that as our strategic advantage. Um, I'm the third generation of my family in this business, started by my grandfather in 1959. He opened the first retail store at Miami Airport. We're very proud of that, 
but not just the longevity. We're the largest operator in Miami and Tampa on the retail side. And we're also one of the smallest operators in DFW. So we feel that we can bring both of those things here. The concepts that we're proposing, Shage is our um, sunglass store. We have premium brands, uh, brands that uh, customers look for and demand. Uh, Intune Electronics, we have three locations currently. This would be our fourth, um, featuring all the best uh, electronics products. And finally, last but not least, is our travel essentials store called Air Essentials. Um, this is a bright, clean, quick, and convenient store. One of the things that we've done more recently in the evolution of this store is introduced uh, self-checkout. Um, our newest store in Nashville does self-checkout. Almost 99% of all the sales are self-checkout and allows us to move people in very quickly. Thank you very much. Okay, so if you would like a couple of minutes oh, to run. I, oh. I have questions. Just You're prerogative. Getting so nervous. Right <laughs> Don't. <clears throat> um, could you just, I can ask specific questions, but maybe just an overview on, on the financials as you propose it in terms of income for the airport? Chris Emmett, Person Development and Finance. Um, yeah, so we, we propose, you're supposed to bid by employment for the minimum rent. Uh, we proposed uh, 25 cents, which should be around 1.3 million uh, on current employments, or you know about 1.5 million based on you know, 6 million employments. Um, and the basis of that was really, um, really taking a holistic approach. We realize that we're not the only new um, development in this area. The incumbents also have a mirror image, pretty much a mirror image, actually I think a little bit more capacity. I know across from the food court, there's two restaurants, uh, or a, a casual dine plus another um, quick serve restaurant, um, as well as on the other side going towards D, there's a you know, fairly big food court. So we're not the only one. So we did take a, um, you know, uh, we dug extremely deep. We're not going to take all the sales. Uh, we do, you know, so we spread the sales. We do think that the airport, I think it's it, um, total airport sales-wise, is about um, six dollars, six fifty, about um, revenue per employment on the food and beverage side. We do think it'll grow, you know, with this new development, especially going post security, um, into the mid eight dollar range. Uh, we do realize that we're not going to be all of that incremental sales. That there is a lot of that is going to go to the um, the other units as well. So. The last thing that we wanted to do is put our partners, um, especially you know, our ACD, ACDB partners, and our brands at a disadvantage by you know, bidding a, a, a mag that may be not be spread out um, you know, among all the concessionaires. So that, that was our proposal. Uh, roughly, what would you say your percent is uh, uh, food and beverage versus retail? Yeah, so food and beverage is about nine million in sales, and retail is three point five million. So about seventy-five, twenty-five. Um, so each of the individual partners, business slash businesses. Uh, I guess I'll form this as a question. Uh, they're all responsible for their own hiring and supervision of health, et cetera. Or is what is the oversight, if any, so SSB? Our company is responsible for the hiring, you know, on their behalf. They they advise you know, you know, exactly how their their brands need to be staffed. We do the hiring. They 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 work for um, SSP and Newslink. Uh, okay, so, so your diversity programs. Are, are then for the your entire operations, including yes. all your partners together. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. 
And that's similar in other airports? Yeah, it's okay. very common. It's so how well do you do? <clears throat> I think we do very well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very well. Yeah. We've, we've gotten, you know, best restaurant tour, what, three, the last three years? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's all I have, Madam Chairman. Uh, this, this is a stupid question, but all of this is on the, not on the secure side of the terminal. It's on the pre-secure, pre-TSA, right? No, no post, it's all post, post, post security. Post. post. Uh, that's post. What I was fussing about early on is it's a shame I've got to have a ticket to go through and get some of this nice yeah. food. <laughs> well, the new that's security fun. design is going to be yeah. post. But what? So that begs the question then: What do you do when hiring to uh, do background checks and so forth uh, for your potential employees? So we always have, uh, uh, you know, hiring uh, events. And uh, no different for the managers than it is for the employees. Uh, we'll go into the community. Uh, we'll go to colleges, high schools, everywhere in the community to make sure that they understand that we're hiring. Uh, go through RSW background check. And uh, they get vetted. And that's how we hire them. Do you do drug testing? Uh, we do not do drug testing. Only if, if there is an accident. And the insurance company may require that. That's too late. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do drug testing if, if, it if it's necessary? If it's a requirement, you know. Yeah, if it's a requirement, yeah, we're not. We definitely will oblige. I hope we can do that at this point. Requirement. Hmm? Okay. Hmm. What? Okay. Any other okay, questions? Thank you. Certainly. Well, it's a real shame we can't bring both of you in because you're both. It's going to be a tough decision for us, I think. So, um, and that's right. You do have a minute to wrap up there. Thank you. <laughs> Again, we thank you for this opportunity. And what we hope we are com communicating to you is that we are very passionate about what we do. We are responsive in the sense that we want to understand the market and deliver an experience that people will talk about and is award winning. Um, the other thing that I will share with you is we do and in get involved in the community. For example, in St. Pete Clearwater, we've engaged with the local art community to bring art into one of our facilities on the, on the land side so that the, the community can have the full experience as well as the traveler. So as we would work with uh, the airport, we would identify opportunities to make sure that we are working directly with the community. Again, we thank you for this opportunity. We're passionate about being here, and we would love to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, do I have to do I have any public comment? Do I ask for public comment on this? I don't know. Um, if or do you have public comment now? Anybody? We're not voting. I think. Um, Madam Chair, I think you can do that once um, the ranking's done. I believe before, okay. before, before they do the rank. So she yes. should do it now. You should do it yeah. now. You should ask, ask for public, public comment, comment now. Perfect. Okay. okay. Is there any public comment on this topic today? Okay. Hearing none. So, uh, members, you all have, uh, we actually have two of these. Um, yeah. You want us to, Melissa, you want us to go ahead and vote now on this particular one? Okay. All right. Whoops. Look, I can point you at some of them. Extra ranking sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was sure ordering. He has these. Okay. Did you eat yours? Did you eat yours? No. No. I I had one just before we got here. Okay. Uh, 
do we want to go forward here with some more items and then they can tell us when they're ready? Yes, Madam Chair, just a suggestion yes, for you please. to consider. I'll so what I was thinking is, is that we finish um, up with the administrative items that we have remaining all the way up through item tw up in, until <coughs> item 22. Okay. And then at that point, we'll be for that, uh, ready for the second set of presentations. And prior to those presentations starting, maybe we can announce the ranking for this presentation that we just had and then move into the second set of presentations. Sounds if that, good. If that works for you. If that's fine with me. Okay. So then we would. The staff there, okay. okay. So then, then we would be ready for item number 13. If right. You that was our with under aviation and Stephen. Yeah. Stephen, uh, if you're ready. Tab 13. Go ahead and Item 13. Item. Yeah. Yeah. Right, good. Good afternoon, Stephen Hennigan, for the record. Uh, administrative item number 13 requests the board to approve a contract with WW Granger, piggybacking the terms and conditions of the NASPO co Cooperative Purchasing Program contract between the state of Florida and Granger. Uh, this contract will provide LCPA with access to Granger's large catalog of equipment and replacement parts for the continuous operation of various systems and facilities at Southwest Florida International Airport as well as at Page Field. Excellent. Any uh, public comments on this item? Hearing none. Is it. there a motion? Okay, stand a motion. Second. 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 Any discussion? No. Okay, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Item 14. Administrative agenda item number 14 requests the board to authorize the executive director to execute a work authorization with fuel facility management in the amount of $378,400 to perform specific priority one repairs to the rent -a car fueling facility system at RSW. Uh, this is a continuation of the work that was previously been approved uh, and these repairs are also directly reimbursed to the Port Authority um, to the Port Authority by the on airport rental car agency. So this is a continuation of the previous work. Excellent. Okay. Any public comment, please? I move the item. Okay. I'll second. second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. If no discussion. Okay, very good. All right, item 15, please. Item 15 requests the board to approve a two-year contract agreement renewal to Daifuku Elite Line Services for baggage handling system operation management and maintenance services at Southwest Florida International Airport. The annual base contract amount is uh, $2.7 million per year for a two-year term, plus, additional, uh, plus any additional and emergency services that would be authorized by LCPA. Um, this would uh, provide an extension out through 2025. Okay. Is there any public comment on this item? I see. If I thought if there was going to be any public comment, it'd be on this one. But we're having no problems with our luggage, right? I have a question. Okay. Yes. Steve, my apologies for not asking this in the briefing, but is is there uh, uh, in the in the contract? Is there another past this extension? Is there another extension? Yes, sir. This is the first of two. Okay. Thank you. I How forgot to ask. Doing? They've been doing great. Yeah, they've been a great partner for us. That's the, if there's ever a comment, it's usually about, they lost my luggage. They did, I don't hear it from anybody, so that's really good. That's I'll move the Okay, so there's a motion. I'll second, second it. Second, any uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, <coughs> item 16, please. Uh, item 16, request board approval to piggyback a Lake County, Florida contract for the purchase of fire equipment supplies and related services on an ad needed basis uh, from the pool of awarded suppliers listed in the background information uh, for the term of the agreement, including any renewals or extensions approved by Lake County. Any public comment? Hearing none. Any? I'll move the item. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Okay, we'll go to item 17. Item 17 requests board approve a second amendment to the Aircraft Administration and Flight Services Agreement between Brown Aviation and the Authority to further define the roles and responsibilities regarding maintenance oversight of the Authority's aircraft and also adds in language for pilot background check requirements. Any public comment? 
Hearing none, is there a motion? I move the item. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now we're going to move to capital programs and strategic planning. Mark? Okay. Item 18. Good afternoon. Uh, the next five items are grants secured by staff that we're requesting your endorsement and approval. Item number 18, the first one, is a $1.4 million grant from the Florida Department of Transportation to contribute towards the construction to realign and repave Chamberlain Parkway, which is currently underway and expected to be completed next year. Excellent. Any public comment? Hearing none, chair motion. I move the Second. item. Second it. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, nice Item number 19 is a $3.1 million grant from FDOT to contribute towards the ongoing construction of the RSW terminal expansion project, which brings FDOT's participation to date to $39 million. Wow. Okay, any public comment? Hearing none. I'll Motion. move the item. Second. Second. No, uh, any discussion? Hearing none. All right. Approved. Y'all are just doing a great job on getting these grants. I'm just going to tell you that. Okay, item 20. <laughs> uh, item number 20 is a $37,000 uh, FTOT grant to be used towards the design to repave the runway here at RSW. The design firm has been selected, and we are negotiating a contract with them right now that will come to you soon, and this grant will help pay for that work. Any public comment? Hearing none, is there a motion? Did, did you Second. say repave mm -hmm. for 37? No, this is a $37,000 grant that will help to pay for the design of repaving. Okay. I'll second it. Sorry. A lot more to come, hope. Sorry. Any further discussion? I missed it. Hearing none, sends approved. Item number 21 is a $1.2 million grant from FTOT to offset Port Authority costs related to a project that repaved many of our taxiways that we completed last year. So this grant reimburses some of our costs, which frees up money to help us fund other future projects. Any public comment? Hearing none. I'll move the item. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Item 22, please. Yes, ma'am. Item number 22 is a federal grant from the TSA continuing to reimburse our costs with the RSW out outbound baggage handling system installed in 2005 as the sixth automated inline system in the U.S. post 9 11. This grant is for $1.1 million and brings the total reimbursement to date to $20.5 million of the original $21 million spent. Uh, we've been working in Washington for the last 18 years to get this money, so with your concurrence today, we're almost there, um, and we will continue to work to go after the remaining half million. The last 18 years? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Holy moly. Well, I love your persistence. Is there any public comment? Hearing none? I'll move the item. Second. That would be terrible if y'all didn't pass this after 18 <laughs> yeah. years. Can we start over? Yeah, <laughs> we don't want it. We'd like a review. Of you. Yeah. All, right, all those in favor, please. Aye. 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 Okay, stands approved. So with that, I'll get my partner in crime over here. Yeah, I should call for a recess. No, call for the Yes, results. I was going to. Yes, sir. Melissa, I had her on my yeah, radar there. Okay, so now we'll hear the uh, results of our previous presentation. That's right. So reading the uh, recommended ranking results into the record in reference to RFP 2306, non-exclusive food, beverage, and retail concessions, the first ranked proposer is OES Concessions, and the second ranked proposer is SSP Americas Incorporated. Uh, the next action to be taken is to present the ASMC's recommended ranking to the Board of Port Commissioners at an upcoming publicly noticed uh, meeting. Agendas for those meetings can be found on our website at www.flylcpa.com. Approval by the Board of the ranking will authorize Port Authority staff to enter into negotiations with the top ranked proposer. Since the RFP was released, and until there is an executed agreement from the RFP or the RFP is canceled, there is a lobbying prohibition in place. It is vitally important that all proposers and their agents or representatives understand this prohibition 
which exists to maintain fairness for competing proposers and integrity in the procurement process. So no proposer may communicate or contact uh, with or discuss any matter related to this solicitation in any way with uh, authority officers, agents, or employees, including members of the Airport Special Management Committee, the Board of Port Commissioners, or any member of Port Authority staff. The only exception to this provision uh, for the proposer is to have questions addressed or obtain clarification about the RFP or the procurement process uh, is to direct those communications, whether they are verbal or in, in writing or in person or electronic, to the designated uh, purchasing office contact. So to be clear about the extent of the permitted communication with the purchasing office, please understand that the lobbying prohibition does extend to uh, email communication. And so that means copying members of the ASMC, the Board of Port, uh, port Commissioners, or any, uh, the Executive Director, or any employee of the Port Authority is an act of lobbying, and uh, lobbying will result in automatic disqualification. So this prohibition is in effect until an agreement is entered into or until the solicitation is canceled. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for going over that. Okay. I move, that, I move we accept the results as presented uh, for item 12. Yeah, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Any further, any discussion? Very none. Then the motion is approved. And a recommendation to the port board. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, now we'll hear presentations on uh, item number 23. Go ahead. Uh, for your last agenda item today, the Port Authority currently holds two contracts for on call architectural and engineering services to work on smaller projects that have a construction cost under $4 million. These current three year contracts are set to expire in June. Over the last three years, on average, each of these firms are assi were assigned about uh, 25 assignments, and not counting amounts passed on to subconsultants working for them, they themselves make about uh, have made about $125,000 each per year. At a previous ASMC meeting, we shortlisted three firms for further consideration that are here today to present to you your experience and qualifications and answer your questions. So unless there's any uh, questions of me, I'll turn it back over to Melissa to begin the presentation. Thank you. <coughs> All right, Melissa Wendell, Senior Procurement Manager, Lee County Port Authority. Uh, as De Deputy Executive, Dur Mark. as Mark <laughs> stated, <laughs> we will hear presentations today from the three respondents who provided uh, qualifications for review to the Port Authority in response to LOQ 2305, General Architectural and Engineering Services. Each proposer will have 10 minutes to present, followed uh, by unlimited time for questions um, from the Airport Special Management Committee, and then concluding with a one-minute wrap-up. So at this time, I would like to introduce our first presenter, uh, which is RSNH Incorporated, and I'm going to introduce Pat Hargrove who is the Vice President of Aviation. Good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity to come before you today. My name is Pat Hargrove. I'm the Vice President at RSNH and Regional Market Leader for Aviation. I'm taking the place of John Walls, who was in your SOQ as a project officer. He had a previous uh, 
family emergency, so I stepped in and took his place. A little bit about RSNH. We have 265 professionals in aviation alone out of 1,400 professionals company-wide. Uh, we are in several markets, uh, federal, aerospace, corporate, construction management, health science, transportation, and of course aviation, the most important. On calls are not new to us. We have on calls all over the nation. We have a wide footprint. Uh, we're in 15 medium hub airports, uh, 23 large hub airports, and 152 on-call consultants nationwide. We are Florida-centric. We are headquartered in Florida. We have seven Florida offices and a number of on-call consultants. Uh, we are consultants to a number of on-calls in the state of Florida. Today, I want to introduce the team. Uh, we have Martha Carvalho, who will be the building's leader for the assignment. Michael Strickler for the airfield uh, civil uh, leader for the assignment. Uh, again, John Wallace is not here. Uh, Joe Bar Barbera is your project manager, and I will introduce him now and let him introduce the team. Hey, thanks a lot, Pat. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, once again, my name is Joe Barbera with RSNH. Mm -hmm. Um, I have uh, my, just a little bit about me. Um, I started with RSNH right out of school. They hired me 14 years ago. I started with our aviation program and have been working with our aviation group ever since. Um, over the course of the last 14 years, the majority of the projects that I have worked on are similar to this contract. They're on-call in nature. I've completed over 70 um, on-call projects in South Florida alone. Um, in the last year, as the project manager for this on-call contract, I've completed um, eight projects. Uh, in general, um, I have worked on everything from airfield rehabilitations, repairs, uh, taxiways, runway repairs, uh, terminal expansion, um, as well as landside improvements as well. Um, even have a couple perimeter security projects I've worked on. Um, so in general, I am just a very huge aviation enthusiast. Uh, ever since being a little kid, I always wanted to be a pilot, loved aviation, uh, in which I am a private pilot, and uh, just, you know, love, love doing what I do and uh, really hope to continue to support you guys. So once again, just kind of getting into uh, a little more detail, you know, Mr. Pat Hargrove, he has 38 years of experience. He has been with RSNH for the last 35 years. He is one of our veteran architects. Uh, Mr. John Walls, once again, he has been with, you know, he's been uh, with the company 30 years of experience. Um, the last 20 years, he has been involved in several of your projects. Mr. Mike Strickler, he is, once again, the Airfield Discipline Lead, 17 years of experience, and straight out of school, once again, another associate, hired right out of college, and has continued to be working with RSNH. And then we have Martha Carvalho, the Buildings Discipline Lead, another one of our senior architects, with 15 years of experience. So... RSNH in general has a long working history with the Lee County Port Authority. Over the last 20 years, we've completed a, a numerous or we've created, uh, helped with some significant projects. Uh, for example, the top one that we have shown here, um, that was when you had your new terminal facility. This is the uh, I-75 interchange and your new terminal drive. Many of the people that you've worked on during this project back almost 20 years ago are, uh, are still staff with RSNH that you work with today. For example, I know Mike Dixon, he was one of the guys that worked on this project, as well as Catherine Britton, still with RSNH, still helping out on transportation projects for the Lee County Port Authority. The lower project here, this is a great example of Mr. Walls' experience. Um, this is your uh, future parallel runway program and crossfield taxiways. Um, we've had uh, significant involvement in the planning and design of that as well. Over the last three years as your current on-call consultant, um, these are the projects that we have worked on. As you can see, there's been a numerous amount of projects. Um, I believe we've successfully completed uh, over 20 projects in the last three years. And just everything from airside, we've done taxiway pavement repairs, uh, taxiway centerline light evaluation, apron pavement repairs, um, as well as some terminal renovations and improvements. We've also worked on some landside improvements as well and some planning studies. These are the projects that I have personally worked on the last year um, as serving as the RSNH project manager. 
So we have the uh, taxiway F3 asphalt pavement repairs. Actually, that's currently ongoing, and next month we uh, actually have Ajax coming out that will be performing the repairs. Um, we have Concourse D repairs. That's another project that's currently ongoing, um, as well as the TNC relocation evaluation. Um, we also helped assess, do some structural damage assessments during Hurricane Ian that I will get into in a little more detail here shortly. Uh, at Pagefield, this is the experience that we've had. You can kind of see on the map um, some significant projects we've worked on. Um, so we have the North Quad Corporate Hangar Development Site Study, West Ramp Expansion, Terminal Drive Widening Design and Construction, as well as Taxiway Alpha 7 Rehabilitation. These are the projects that I have worked on over the last year um, as the project manager that I have been involved in. Uh, last, I believe it was last fall, we wrapped up the terminal drive widening design and construction project that was completed. Um, and right now we are currently working on the west ramp expansion as well as a hangar siting analysis study. So being a, being a, a, a very large, busy, single runway airport, I know how critical it is to maintain operations. That, that is key. Um, any impacts, you know, we understand the commitment to keeping these, you know, passengers flowing, runway open, and uh, continue with operation. So one of the biggest and most important things is strategy for or responsiveness. So I will continue to be the single point of contact as the project manager. I'll make sure to assess the, situ uh, the situation as it arises and bring in the subject matter, uh, matter experts. We'll make sure to prioritize those solutions and have a cost benefit kind of relationship, understand the cost associated with that, and then be able to communicate uh, to you guys clearly with the scope if required. Um, as a trusted advisor, as you can count on, this is just an example of some relevant project experience where we've had, I mean, we have significant relevant project experience with this type of contract. I personally am available 24-7. Um, I have a dedicated team that supports me, and this, this is just one of those examples. Um, I was called by a client on a Friday evening, late fr Friday evening incident, and they needed assistance immediately. Basically, we had a runway shut down. We needed to do uh, pavement eval. We needed to do damage assessments and see what's the minimum we need to do to get this runway back open. Um, thankfully, I had the team to support me um, where we were able to basically work around the clock through the weekend. We were able to coordinate with local contractors, put together design repair plans, and actually have these areas fixed and repaired before the weekend was over by Sunday that evening. So that is, that is the kind of dedicated team that I have supporting me. Um, here's just another with the very unfortunate and devastating impacts of Hurricane Ian. This is just some demonstration of the responsiveness and commitment to the Lee County Port Authority. I was given a call once again on a Friday afternoon to come in and do some structural assessments. We needed a structural engineer, uh, and that's what we made happen. We um, had one of our structural engineers on site the following morning. I was there personally with him um, at 7 a.m. doing structural uh, evaluations of your facilities. Here's another example just of our full service capabilities. Um, we were part of the team that was able to assist in restoring uh, temp emergency access back to Sanibel Island um, within, I believe, 13 days. So just once again, overall, RSNH, we are a full service Florida-based firm. Um, we, are, um, we have the experts, we have the deep bench or the, the resources available to provide you um, whatever's needed, whatever the circumstances may, uh, may come, come your way. Um, we're available 24-7, and, uh, you know, we, will, we really hope that we get the opportunity to keep the continuity, pick up the pencils where we left off, and continue with this contract. And uh, once again, thank you all for the opportunity, and I hope I get to continue building these relationships with all of you. Okay. Any questions by the committee? Uh, what do you foresee as uh, one of the most difficult parts of your job in performing the services for the airport? I would say the, I'm sorry. I would say the most difficult part is going to be responsiveness. But that is one thing that we absolutely excel on. Having guys like Mr. Pat Hargrove and John Walls, they have always provided me the resources that I have needed to basically make it happen. Whatever is needed to support the client, 
they give me the green light. And uh, that's one of the biggest challenges, but I feel that's one of the things that we really excel at as, as well. Will you be participating in uh, any of the design of the uh, airport uh, terminal as we go forward? Hey, I would love to. Uh, at the moment, uh, I, I am not, but sure, that's, I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I had the opportunity. <laughs> So do you, do you ha physically have an office here in Southwest Florida? Unfortunately, we do not physically have an office right here in Fort Myers. Um, we feel that we have been doing an excellent job, you know, maintaining the, uh, the, the, the quality and the responsiveness that's needed. We have an office in Orlando. Uh, I'm personally out of Fort Lauderdale along with, uh, with Mike and uh, Martha. Um, we also have an office in Tampa. So. We kind of feel like we have it really well covered, but you know, if the demand needs and we and the volume of work is here, you know, then I'm sure that RSNH would consider it eventually. Okay. Have you been our uh, project manager all through this? You're y'all are currently hold the contract, aren't you? Currently, okay. for about the past year, um, I have been the the RSNH project manager. Okay. Any other? No. no. Okay. If you'd like a minute to wrap it up, please. Yep. So just, just in summary, so why RSNH? Um, as I mentioned, we have a deep bench of professional experts available to make your projects a priority at a moment's notice. We have 1,400 associates nationwide. We have a large presence here in Florida. Um, we, we are your current on-call consultant, um, delivering you know, quality, quality of services. We've completed well over 20 projects successfully over the last three years um, with a you know, trusted team of experts. And uh, we hope we get the opportunity to continue working with you and building our relationship. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. next 10-minute presentation, I would like to introduce you to Infrastructure Consulting Engineering, uh, Doug Cambrett, Project Manager. members of the selection committee, um, the special management committee, excuse me. I'm Doug Hambrecht. I'm the project manager for this. I'm very excited to be here. Um, infrastructure Consulting and Engineering has 432 employees. We have uh, multiple contracts in Florida, uh, nine general consulting contracts managed by our different project managers. I'm just uh, one of the project managers. Um, I've been doing this for 28 years. I'm licensed in six different states as a professional engineer. Some of my qualifications, um, I'm not going to go through all of these, but what I'm here to illustrate is that I've done a lot of different projects, uh, starting in the upper left with boarding bridges at uh, Baton Rouge Airport, at Tallahassee, at Fort Walton Beach. <clears throat> Below that, we did the design of five um, a320 parking spaces at Destin Fort Walton Beach. Uh, below that, uh, some experience at Palm Beach International, Taxiway C4D, and Taxiway Sierra. Um, we've also done some work at General Aviation Airports. The, the one in the, uh, the top left there is uh, Sebastian. We've redesigned a lot of their taxiways. And then some tea hangers at Sarasota. Um, fuel farm facility and some canopy work at Destin Fort Walton Beach and a runway uh, rehabilitation at Ocala Airport. Um, what this means to you is that my experience is, is very broad, um, which means I can talk intelligently to the, uh, to the staff and I can communicate information back to uh, our group right here. And our group with me here today, uh, they don't have a speaking role because this is kind of a short 10-minute uh, thing, but this is uh, Bob Anderson. He's representing architecture. I've worked with Bob for 25 years. 
Um, Richard Osborne is representing our planning group. I uh, worked with him for 13 years. And Daniel Elsa is former airport uh, um, deputy director, uh, 13 years experience specializing in strategic uh, business plans and airport management. <clears throat> our agenda today, we're going to discuss how we're a complete in-house team, um, what our understanding is of general consulting contracts, the third bullet is how we're a client-oriented firm and how we want to be your trusted partner. First of all, I want to discuss, we have a, a, a very deep bench um, consisting myself as the project manager, and these are all the positions and disciplines available to myself. Uh, Maram is our deputy project manager. We have um, uh, airport management uh, experience, planning, of course, engineering, architecture, and environmental support. capabilities of those individuals. Um, federal assistance, we have a, an ex-FAA um, manager, ADO manager, by the name of Lacey Spriggs, who's got connections in Washington, is good with grant compliance, and uh, uh, also um, grant compatibility, grant assurances. Airport business, uh, how we can help with leases, contracts, and special airport development. We have construction managers and construction inspectors. Architecture, uh, we do ARF buildings, terminal buildings, interior improvements. What's shown right there is a concession build out of a restaurant. Uh, our aviation planning group can help with uh, quick analysis of surfaces. Uh, we can do some concept layouts. And uh, what's shown there is an apron layout scheme for some uh, aircraft parking positions around the terminal. And what I show there for engineering is just an example of how we can help with smaller projects. This is a maintenance project that involved just replacement of um, uh, the car wash uh, components, um, some of the fueling, and the vacuum stations at um, uh, Destin Port Walton Beach Airport for the uh, rental car companies. So having all this experience in-house is really meant to illustrate to you how we're a nimble company, which means if you come to us with, with something we can pull all of our resources together from airport management to FAA assistance and planning and architecture and give you solutions without a lot of subconsultants and, and other uh, things that might slow us down. We recognize this is smaller projects and they involve various disciplines. Um, we recognize the importance of um, coordinating with uh, the Port Authority staff. <clears throat> This is an example on the right. This illustration is something we did that combines our, uh, our pavement experts and also our planning experts running this AVI plan software to see if a, a, a 767 can land at a, a TGG Group 3 uh, taxiway. And it turns out the pavement can support it, but the wheels would run off the edge. So we were able to, to kind of quickly get back to them and say, no, it's not a good idea that that aircraft land there. Next uh, in our agenda is understanding of general consultant contracts. Uh, what's very important to me as I relate to the airport staff would be uh, special coordination with budgets, schedules, and reporting. I, I like to keep the clients uh, constantly in the loop through communication, emails, or just uh, overall reports. I added this slide to just talk about the DBE, how we're committed to uh, adding, uh, if requested, the uh, uh, valuable team members that would add value to the team and commit to the 10 to 20 percent uh, DBE goal, uh, whatever you decide that it should be set at. Uh, the third bullet uh, is our we're a client-oriented firm. Um, we pledge to return phone calls within four hours. Uh, our in-person meeting request, it says there within 48 hours, but if you say, Doug, look, we have a problem, we need you here, um, we get in the car, uh, we drive down early mornings, late nights, hotel stays, whatever it takes. Uh, we respond to emails the same day, even if it's, hey, you know, we don't have the answer, we're, we're looking at it, but we received your email. Our workload will drop off at the end of 2023, um, so we have availability to serve the Lee County Port Authority staff. 
and I'm projecting myself as 100% available to serve Lee County in the event that we're selected. Finally, uh, we want to be a trusted partner. Um, I've been doing this for 28 years. I have experience in all aspects of design and construction. We've never done work for Lee County. Uh, we're excited about the opportunity. And uh, here's some quotes from some of our uh, current clients. Uh, we have a, uh, a great team, and, and working with us is, uh, is enjoyable. And uh, how we'll go th uh, the extra steps to keep our, our clients happy. So why select ICE? Well, who we are, we're a qualified, multidisciplined aviation firm. What we provide, relevant, similar experience that directly benefits the Lee County Port Authority how we approach your needs, uh, a dedication to client service. And um, with that, we uh, open it up for questions. Uh, the, this is for a uh, architectural and engineering services. I've heard you mention quite a bit about engineering services. Uh, which one of those do you feel is the most important, or do you rate them both equal architectural and engineering services? Well, I'm engineering. <laughs> engineering is way more difficult. Well, I was just wondering why we didn't hear very much about the architecture. Well, I'm the project manager. I'm an engineer. I'll let Bob speak about architecture. Well, as Doug mentioned, we've worked together for a number of years on a lot of the same variety of projects we talked about. I mean, uh, recently, as you mentioned, the, the rental car project, uh, we've done several hangar projects, uh, one of them. Uh, just finishing permitting. Uh, that Excuse me, sir. Could you come up to speak to the mic, please? Thanks. Sorry. Um, so one of the uh, the projects that we're just completing permitting on now uh, for Valkyria is a, a big uh, hangar uh, development project similar to maybe what you're looking at uh, that includes T hangers, box hangers, uh, standalone, uh, you know, a corporate type hangar about 12,000 square feet. Uh, so we have a, you know, a wide variety of things that we have worked on. Uh, I've been fortunate to uh, work on six new terminals and the renovations of uh, another uh, six or eight uh, beyond that uh, GA terminals, uh, hangars, and about a dozen rental car facilities. So over those 40 years, 30 of them have been dedicated to aviation, and uh, I've been very fortunate to, to work on a lot of things, especially down here in the state. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? And I, I don't believe you. Do you have an office here in Southwest Florida? No, we don't. We uh, we'd be coming out of Tampa. Uh, we did pledge to open an office if, similar to what RSNH said, if uh, you know if the workload demands it. Um, but again, you know, we service clients all over the state of Florida. We get up early. We we leave late, and it's just how business is done. But if the need arises, then yes, we will. Yeah. With all this traffic congestion, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we got to go back up north after this. What We're anticipating will, a little bit of a little bit of traffic. Yes. Is a uh, contract in excess of a small project? Yeah, but is um, uh, below four million dollars under in four million? About four. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Okay, no other questions? All right, we uh, have a minute to wrap up. Tell us why we should be selecting. <clears throat> well, um, Southwest Florida Regional Airport is an important airport to uh, the region, to the state, and to, and to federal transportation facilities. Uh, Page Field is an excellent reliever uh, to Fort Myers um, and to RSW. And uh, it's an important general aviation airport. We want to be we want to be part of that. We want to be part of that that uh, preservation, that growth, and that success. So how we're going to do that is uh, providing a complete, qualified, uh, in-house team that's nimble, that's able to quickly respond to your needs. <clears throat> a team that's focused on client service. We will be here when called. And finally, a highly competent. Uh, project manager for the entire contract duration. I've been 
in two companies my whole career. Um, this uh, I've been with this company now for eight years, and I plan to retire here and hopefully uh, do business with you and uh, spend the next three years together. But uh, it's very exciting, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Must be Michael Baker. Must be. All right, our third and final uh, presentation today is by Michael Baker International, and I'd like to introduce you to Mark Kistler, the aviation practice lead. Good afternoon. As uh, I am Michael, uh, my name is Mark Kistler. I am the aviation practice lead for Michael Baker. And I do ask that you buckle your seat belts and put your tray tables in the upright position so we can <laughs> engage in our trip as to why Michael Baker should be your firm of choice to provide uh, general architectural and engineering services to the Lee County Port Authority. Uh, Michael Baker has been in business since 1940, and we've, throughout our firm's history, uh, we have endeavored uh, to meet the needs of our nation's airports. We have worked at over 350 airports across the country over 200 of which have been in a general consulting uh, role, similar to the one that you are seeking here. We have served both uh, air care and general aviation airports, and that story continues throughout the state of Florida, where we've been working at over 50 airports here in the state. Um, also, would like to point out that we've worked with many multi-airport owners, which, like you, operate both an air care airport as well as one or more general aviation facilities. Now here in Southwest Florida, we did take your advice back in 2019 and open an office up by the Forum and are pleased to be able to say we've been continuing to show our dedication and commitment to growing our services in this area. Now, our commitment and what we do, uh, we use the phrase, we make a difference with our uh, communities we work in and with our clients. Uh, following Hurricane Ian, we did partner with the Charlotte County United Way to make sure that our uh, donations, both, both our employees and our firm, went directly to the Charlotte County Airport Authority staff to help them recover from the storm. And that's just who we are as a firm. And uh, in providing our aviation services, we are multidisciplinary. We do have been providing services throughout um, our firm's history. The, our, we set our aviation services up to meet the full needs of an airport, whether it be architecture, engineering, construction, planning, environmental. And also a firm of our size, we've gotten into some more specialty areas, such as GIS, mobile LIDAR, uh, working with uh, some of the things right now with the electrification of uh, both ground service equipment as well as the vertical takeoff and landing market as well. Now, we'd like to introduce our project manager, Nathan Parrish. I've had the opportunity to work with Nathan for the last five years and have come to appreciate his professionalism and dedication to providing a very high quality, uh, technically sound uh, designs and specifications. He is a certified construction manager, so he brings that perspective to things as well. And I would be remiss of not saying that if given the chance, as you're, even as your David Morse has seen, he will do an excellent job for you. Nathan? And as Mark mentioned, Michael Baker is a multidisciplinary team. And the team that we've assigned to this contract, as you can see here, does do all of the services required by this contract. With us here today is Tom Schilling and Stephen Iobana, who are the will be our lead architect and lead engineer for this project. But I've been in the trenches working with this team for a while now, and I'm confident in our ability to deliver good work for you. We're also a very available team and can get started for work for you right away. Here are the services that are listed in your LOQ, and we've lumped them into larger categories. But the team you just saw on the previous screen has experience to cover all of these different disciplines. And we've also identified a team lead for each one of these disciplines. But beyond that team, Michael Baker is a very large firm. 
We have specialty practices, as Mark mentioned, and that really will be valuable to this contract. One thing I wanted to call out is that we do have a large construction management group within Michael Baker that has proven to be a very good and very valuable resource to us recently, especially keeping a trend on those constantly changing construction prices we're seeing. We're also a big firm, as we said, which allows us to move multiple projects forward at the same time if needed. But we also take pride in the small projects because we understand that these on-call contracts are typically smaller projects that require a quick turnaround. We've, Michael Baker's done over 3,100 aviation task orders in the last 10 years. One way that we accomplish this is through our project control specialists, which is something that we do to help us get the contracts executed quickly and get uh, help the project managers really with the scoping and things of that nature. And one other thing that we do Michael Baker is very good and has an established process to deliver these projects. We begin by scoping with Lee County and really working out the details up front. Then we follow up with regular check-ins and status updates with the airport. We also do master schedules to be able to track multiple projects that are ongoing simultaneously. And of course, quality is always key when we talk about doing technical assignments. Michael Baker has a very regimented step-by-step -step quality control process that we follow. But it's not just about delivering and know, knowing how to deliver on-call contracts. It's about understanding the airports here in Lee County, and Michael Baker has familiarity and experience with that. For example, we know that here at RSW, if we're doing a project, we have to coordinate with many different concessionaires and airlines depending on the project, whereas over at Page Field, we may need to be coordinating with T-Hanger tenants. We also may be working with a CMGC here, which is unique here to Southwest Florida. And I actually worked on a, with a CMGC just last year on a project. We also have, of course, the utility coordination and being familiar with those lo local utility entities and we have a few of those listed here. We, this process that we use works, and it works well for us. Here at Atlanta Hartsfield, Michael Baker has held a contract there now for the last 25 years, and Michael Baker is the go-to consultant for anything on the airfield at Atlanta Hartsfield. In fact, we've rehabilitated all five of their runways at one point in time. We've also, done both of their new end around taxiways. Michael Baker also does mobile LIDAR for their interiors and their airfields on a regular basis. We also, another successful on-call is the other two medium hub airports in this state. We've been working at Jacksonville Aviation Authority for the past 20 years. Also, we've worked at Palm Beach County, both on-call contracts. And We've also worked here at Punta Gorda Airport as, an on, as a current on-call, as well as St. Pete Clearwater International Airport. We've been serving St. Pete Clearwater now for the last 16 years. And at this airport, our work is primarily architecture focused, as far as terminal interior renovations, baggage handling upgrades, as well as security screening upgrades. In addition to the on-call work that we've done at Punta Gorda Airport, we also just completed this new General Aviation Air Center at Punta Gorda. This facility opened up right before Hurricane Ian hit, actually, and was used as a base operation facility for the hurricane response effort. This project was featured in the Airport Improvements Magazine article, and as a private pilot myself, I also understand that pilot's perspective and bring that to our general aviation airports. And finally, of course, we're going to save the best for last. Michael Baker just completed last year as the CENI, a new airfield lighting vault here for you at RSW. I personally manage that project, and we have a local inspector here that has done 
that was out here on site on a daily basis, and he will be available to us for this contract as well and will be a great asset to our team. As we come in for final approach, I'm confident that Michael Baker is the right firm, a right fit for this contract. We are a multidisciplinary, large firm that covers all the services necessary for this contract. We have, you've seen our on-call experience from the large airports at Atlanta Hartsfield all the way down to small task orders for small contracts. But most importantly, we're familiar and we're local here. As Mark said, we have an office in Fort Myers. We have folks staffed there. We can be here at a moment's notice if something arises. And finally, we are dedicated to you here at LCPA. We are, we want to provide service here. We want to grow our relationship with you here. And as the project manager, I dedicate myself and, and my team here to delivering great service for you. I thank you for the time. And we'll now open the floor to questions. Thank you. No. Uh, so you will be the project manager? Yes. OK, and you're here locally? I'm located in Tampa. You're in Tampa. Okay. Uh, I'm here locally. Okay. And, and so if uh, we have a, a phone call out to your company for a service, uh, who does the phone call go to? I, I think that will go to, to Nate as the point Absolutely. guy. Nathan. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll be the primary point of contact for the contract, and then I will be able to delegate. And if we need boots on the ground immediately, I will first contact Steve. And we'll be able to get here quickly to address. How long does it take to, uh, for us to get an answer when we make that phone call for services? If, you, if it's an emergency situation, we can be on site within I mean, an hour. How about an email to answer an email? Oh, we're, we'll be very responsive for that. Is that, a, is that like yeah. within 24 hours or 12 Absolutely. hours? Absolutely. 24. Firm. Yeah. Firm wide, our policy is two hours on is two hour response two hours. hours. Yes, sir. And uh, on this particular contract, uh, which do you see as being uh, requiring more work of the engineering or the architectural aspect? Well, I, I see a balance about half and half. And it depends. There, there is, I think, historically, you've had two consultants here. And we've seen other airports give more engineering work to one firm and more architect architecture work to the other. So it has a lot to do with how Lee County Port Authority wants to distribute the work. But typically, airport on-calls have a pretty even distribution of architecture engineer and engineering. Thank you. Yeah, I represent Collier County on this body. Uh, what work are you doing for Rosetsky? <coughs> Oh, in Naples. So, yeah, we just started. We've got three projects going in Naples uh, with the airport authority now. We, we just got bids in on a pilot's lounge renovation there. We're doing uh, some work, some site uh, civil work on an observation deck, playground, picnic area for them, which is a pretty fun <laughs> kind of different project. Yeah, fun. And um, I was just out on Friday. We're doing some hangar door replacements. Yeah. For them, so they've got I think 23 doors going this phase. They've been phasing, replacing all their hangar doors over the last couple of years. So I think we were going to do um, a phase after season um, of doors, and then probably another phase of doors, probably another 20, 25 doors um, to follow. Thank you. They've been pretty active there. You have a minute to wrap up then, please. Well, so thank you. Um, let me first uh, thank you, uh, congratulate you on your number one ranking for RSW with Travel Lens Magazine. It's a very nice honor that you guys have. Um, as we, you've heard us speak about Michael Baker, and the one thing about our firm is we are multidisciplinary. We have been providing aviation services for over 80 years now. And we have set our firm up to meet, you know, take those lessons learned of eight decades and to understand what different airports, under, you know, what they face. Whether it may be an assignment, it's architectural. Here's one that's engineering. 
We have a planning assignment that may pop up. Or there's a construction, we need to have an inspector out there. We can provide that. We also understand being able to take care of with the environmental services. We truly can take a project from concept to concrete. The, you know, using those lessons learned is what has allowed us to be able to be successful in, mean, in serving as many airports as we have throughout our, our history. And we are dedicated to being, providing that for you. And again, thank you for your time today. We'll be glad and look forward to hearing. Uh, appreciate your time here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. While they're gathering those, uh, or tallying those, uh, Ben, would you like to go ahead and give your executive report? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. I will be brief since I know we've worked you very hard today. <laughs> so, uh, just a few items. Uh, JetBlue just announced a new nonstop city for our SW with seasonal service to Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, that'll be uh, starting on January 4th, 2024. Flights will operate twice a week and increase to daily service in mid-February through the end of uh, the Red Sox spring training. So that'll be for next year. Uh, RSW did finish the first three months of 2023 as the 33rd busiest airport out of the top, top 40 for TSA throughput, surpassing bigger airports like Raleigh-Durham, uh, Chicago Midway, and Sacramento. <laughs> Although it is long range, um, I just would like to say we are starting to see some planned year planned year over year uh, increases for flights and seats by our partners, uh, airline partners for June and July, which is good news. You know, we have been reporting um, traffic being down and capacity being down for the past several months since since Hurricane Ian. Um, however, for June and July, we are starting to see some uh, year over year planned increases. So we're, we're glad to see that. Uh, last, I'd just like to say we are planned uh, to have a workshop after the May 4th joint meeting and some of the things that we'll be discussing in that joint meeting, uh, joint workshop, will be our fiscal year 23-24 budget. Um, we also plan to further discuss page field fuel sales methodology that we touched on at our last workshop um, and uh, then we're also going to be doing an update on the Skyplex. Uh, property project that we've uh, engaged Cushman Wakefield for and discuss some of their deliverables that they're doing. They're, they've been doing a lot of work and uh, we want to show you what they've done. So, What about the parking lot? Parking lot uh, as far so as the planning for the you know short term versus long term? The rates, rates and stuff like that? Stuff like that. Well we we pretty much settled with the board, or I should say got a consensus from the board in terms of what rates to go forward with. So our budget for 23 and 24, we will have those projections in there. Okay. And we certainly could recap what that was um, as we present the budget. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, good. Thank you. Yeah, sure. And that's all I have, Madam Chair. Okay, and is that May 4th meeting with the port board? Yeah, it's a workshop. It'll be after our joint meeting. Yeah. That's the day we make the selection of the new president. So. Oh, is that? Yes. Oh. So I'll probably. Well, we're, we're going to have two of you that day. I flipped. <laughs> <laughs> this, since it's a workshop, not our budget. I'll yeah, see you. it's a workshop. Okay, it's a workshop. very yeah. good then. Yeah. Okay, uh, court attorney, do you have some items? No items. Right? No items. No. Very good. Okay, comments from the chair who's in Washington, so no. Yes, when they come back. Yeah, okay. And then, um, so I thought we'd call for public comment after we hear what the results are, right? Okay. On that item, is that correct, Lewis or Ben? And then call before we take the vote. The, 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 the vote. Yes, but she'll give the, the thing. Huh.
Madam Chair, Madam Chair we'll, we should probably call for public comment uh, for on the last item. We just yes. heard presentations for now before yeah. the results. Before the results. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you I should go ahead and do that. After now. the no, results. No, no. Right, right. Okay. Is there any public comments that anyone would like to give before Melissa gives us on item the results yeah. on item 23? Hearing none. Okay. <laughs> Melissa, would you like to give us a comment? Okay, in reference to RFP 2305 for General Architectural and Engineering Services for Lee County Port Authority, the first rank respondent is Michael Baker International Incorporated. The second rank respondent is Infrastructure Consulting Engineering, and the third rank respondent is RSNH. And I do have an important lobbying prohibition announcement to make. This is for the proposers. Um, we don't want any inadvertent lobbying uh, violations occurring. So the next steps in the process is that this recommended ranking by the Airport Special Management Committee will be presented to the Board of Port Commissioners. Um, if the Board of Port Commissioners approves the recommended ranking, then that will authorize staff to enter into uh, negotiations with the top ranked proposer, or respondent rather, from the time the LOQ was released up until the time that we have a final uh, executed a, uh, agreement in place, there is a lobbying prohibition that is active. And so that means that um, respondents are uh, prohibited from having any communication whatsoever with anyone um, regarding this solicitation. Uh, with any uh, Board of Port Commissioner member, with any Airport Special Management Committee member, and with any employee of Lee County Port Authority, including the Executive Director. Um, so if, there, if you have questions about the LOQ or about the procurement process, you can direct those questions to the designated purchasing office contact. Um, however, I do want to be clear that if you're directing communications or questions to the designated purchasing office contact, do not CC any ASMC members, BOPC members, or any employee of the County Port Authority. Um, lobbying does result in automatic disqualification from consideration. Uh, and again, this prohibition does not end until there is an agreement signed or until the solicitation is canceled. Um, I would like to thank our presenters for their time and effort expended to this point in the process and also for their interest in doing business with the County Port Authority. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so very much. Madam Chair. All right, so we need a motion. To, I move uh, that we accept well, the results as read. And is there a second? Second. Okay, unless there's any <coughs> further discussion. Hearing none, we accept the, um, rec the results to go before the Board of Port Commissioners. And I just want to stop and thank all the committee members that do all the work before it gets to us. It really helps a lot with everything that's there. Okay, call a vote. Yeah, there was no discussion. Is there a vote? <laughs> all in favor, right? Aye. 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 Wait till you get this chair again. I'll harass you. Okay. I still want to thank all the committee members that worked so hard on, on what you do to get us prepared for this. And that saves me a lot of time, but uh, looking at everything. All right, and with that, is there any public comment on other matters that need to be brought before the ASMC members? Hearing none, then we'll adjourn and, to, and then see each other at our May 4th Port Board Joint Meeting with a workshop to follow. Thank y'all so very much. <coughs>